Hello, everyone here. This is Ethan Lee from Think Academy Singapore. Today, we are going to talk about fraction comparison. So, yeah, there are some cases we need to compare the value of two fractions. Who is larger? Who is smaller? Right. So, this is a very important argument that is tested every year except for last year. So, 2019, 2018, 2017, uh, may, maybe uh, earlier. So every year there is a question. So the question merely comes in the same way that we have talked about in the first round countdown. So maybe like this one. So there is a fraction with now maybe something like this. And we need to find maybe the largest integer not exceed to it, right? So we talked about it already in the first round countdown, maybe at day six or day five, it's named the inequality, and you can search for this. So today we are not going to talk about this type of question. And this type of question occurs twice, 2090 and maybe 2060, I think, right? So we today are going to talk about something more difficult about the fraction comparison. So first question, yeah, it comes from the 2014, 2014, sorry. So yeah, this is about the sequence here. So in the sequence, each number is calculated as the sum of two fractions. And we need to find that among these 20 numbers, what is the smallest one among it, right? So yeah, by comparing two fractions, there are many ways. First of all, we can unify the denominator or maybe no, unify the numerator for single fraction. But like this, when we are comparing with the sum of two similar fractions, there is a very important way to tell the larger one and smaller one by calculating the difference. So if we want to compare A and B, we just calculate B minus A. So if B minus A is greater than 0, then B is greater than A. Or on the other hand, if B minus A is a minus number, is smaller than 0, then B is smaller than A. So this is how we use the difference to tell the larger one and the smaller one. So yeah, for this, maybe we give them a name, maybe a A5, A6, and then maybe a A24, right? So maybe we can calculate, if we want to compare A5 and A6, we just calculate A6 minus A5, right? So this would be, yeah, for the former, former is like this, and for the latter, is like this. And then, the first part, of course, 4 over 5 is larger than 4 over 6, right? So maybe we can converse it by putting the letter 1 25th. Then, write it in this way, right? So, yeah, for the latter part, yeah, we can unify the denominator and to be 5 times 6, and numerator is 4, right? So now we just need to compare this two fraction, and then we can then do not unify the denominator, we unify the numerator. So make it to be 4 over 100. And then this is a 4 over 13, right? So of course, 4 over 100 is smaller than 4 over 13. So this is a minus number, it's smaller than 0. So if it's smaller than 0, then we can find a6 is smaller than a5. Correct? Then, now we can find a pattern here. For any adjacent term, yeah, two adjacent terms, we find this difference, we would find maybe a a m minus and minus 1. So here, yeah, the latter part remains unchanged as it's always 1 over 25. And the former part, yeah, it would be 
then minus 1 and the n here. So it can be written as 3 is it's a n times n minus 1 and the 4 here, which is So if you want to compare this number with 0, we just compare 100 and n times n minus 1, right? So of course, 100 equals to 10 times 10. So we know that if n is smaller or equal to 10, then n times n minus 1 is smaller than 100, and this value, the difference is smaller than 0, which means then a n is smaller than a and minus 1. So from 5, 6, 7, it grows smaller and smaller, so which means a5, a6, a9, and a10, right? So they get smaller and smaller. However, if n is greater than 10, then we find yeah, the difference here, right? So n times n minus 1 is greater than 100, which makes the fraction, the difference is greater than 10. If it's greater than 0, then a n is greater than a n minus 1. So the latter one is greater than the former one. So which means for 11, 12, and then the latter part, then it grows greater and greater. So if we want to find the smallest terms among these 20 numbers, of course, it's go down till a10 and then go up. So the smallest is a10, right? Then we find the answer of the question. So by using the difference of two adjacent numbers to get the final answer, so last thing for us to do is to just calculate out the A10, which is so maybe a 2 over 5, then 2 over 5 again. Now both, both are 2 over 5, so which means it a 4 over 5. And m over n is 4 over 5, then m top, uh, at n is a 9 here. So, now this is a difficult question. In 2014, it's a five-point question, right? Okay? Now, and the second type of questions occurs twice. Yeah, in 2015 and 2017. I remember there is a third time it occurs, but I don't recall the actual year, right? So, this question asks us to find a fraction that is between two other fractions. And we want to make the numerator and denominator as smaller as possible. So, yeah, for this for example, this one, yeah, we have 4 over 15 and 3 over 10, right? So we need to find, yeah, the proportion of female, maybe x female in y total, right? So between these two fractions, we need to make the total number, the y, as small as possible, right? So how can we do this? How can we do this? So the most accurate way is to use the reverse number to help us do this. So, we want to compare these three fractions, and they are all proper numbers. What if we turn it upside down, we calculate the reverse number? Remember that the original number is larger, then its reverse number should be smaller, right? So, first of all, we just calculate the reverse number of this three, so which makes it to be 4, 15, y, x, and 10, 3, right? So then we make 3 improper fraction. For improper fraction, on the other hand, we can just separate the integer part, so which makes it to be 3 and 3 quarters. Now this is 3 and 1 third. So be sure we find that, yeah, the fraction here, right, they both had the integer part of 3. So y over x should also have the fraction, yeah, the integer part of 3, right? So to write the fraction, we can let y to be 3x then plus a z here. So this would be a z over x, right? 
Now we have another fraction. So we remove the 3 away. So 4 over 3 over 4 is greater than z over x than 1 over 3 here. Then remember that y is formed by x and z. So if you make y as small as possible, you should make x and z as small as possible, right? So what is small number, smallest value for x and z? Yeah, maybe if x equals to 1, then not possible. So this fraction should be 8z. So it's as let this to be 1. So this is not correct. But if x equal to 2 here, right? So if x is at 2, then half, yeah, 1, 1 over 2 is just fit the need. So we can easily get the smallest possible value at x equal to 2, z equals to 1. Then we go back to y, it can be 2 times 3 plus 1, so y should be 7. So why is this way help? Because for a proper fraction, its numerator is always smaller than the denominator. Then we, when we take the reverse number and we, room, we, we remove the integer part, we make the original numerator to be the denominator, right? So actually, from this step, we get two fractions with smaller denominators. The smaller the denominator, the easier for us to find the actual value for the fraction, right? So yeah, if you cannot tell this apart from this part, we can just repeat the process again. We do the reverse number again, then we should get two even smaller denominators again and again, right? So maybe we can try the 2017's question. So it asks us to find a fraction between 3 tenths and 5 sixteenths. Or maybe, uh, yeah, maybe not like that. Uh, I remember it's, uh, actually this is smaller. Or, oh yeah, correct, correct, correct. Yeah, this is correct. It is correct. Uh, sorry, sorry for that. Okay, then, yeah, we need to find the actual value, smallest value of x over y. Again, we can use the same method. So we may choose the reverse number here. So it's 310 yx 516, right? So then, yeah, then we make, again, we make y equals to 3x times 8z to get this is 3, this is a 3, this is a 3. So then we get one third is greater than x over z and it's one fifth. So then we can easily find the value of x. So it's between one third and one fifth. So smaller value for x should be 4, right? So x will equal to 4, and then there is 1, then y should be a 13, right? So actually, there are many different ways for us to just find a fraction between two fractions. Maybe we can unify the denominator, unify the numerator, or just use the maybe interesting thing that we can just calculate the sum of the numerator and the denominator. We get a new fraction and it fit need. But all these stuff cannot lead us to the actual smallest number, right? So it cannot guarantee the smallest value. So if we want to find the smallest value, we should master this reversed number ways. Okay, now that's all for today. Thank you and see you tomorrow.